welcome aboard. You know, I was gonna clean the boat before I made this video, but uh, I think that would be dishonest because it's hard to keep a boat this small clean all the time, so why, why should I make you think that it is always that way? So you're just gonna get a look at how we live on the boat and what kind of space we have. Let's, let's go take a look inside. Okay, we're gonna go down inside a little Tarka now. And now we're inside the boat. That's really all there is to the boat. Like, people are always giving us boat tours and they go on other people's boats. And it's like, okay, let me show you this room and that room. room. When people come aboard Tarka, it's like, okay, well, here's the boat tour. Okay, you've seen it. Let's go back outside now. So where we just stepped down into is our kitchen, the galley, if you want to use boat terminology. On this side, we have our two burner stove. It's not gimbaled, so when we're sailing, this can be a really tricky thing to use. This just goes on here like that. We have lots of storage on the boat. Down in here, they have a very deep storage, which is kind of full of dried foods, things like that. Behind that, we have our dishes. And then we have more of that kind of stuff back there, too. Over here, and this we store of rice, pasta, couscous. So it's in the galley, it needs to be easy to access. So here we have a, a switch that will disengage the two separate battery banks we have if the voltage gets below a certain point, and right now it's way above that value. So if it gets below about 12.6, this isolates the two battery banks so they don't discharge off of one another because that will ruin your batteries. Here we have a charger for the alternator and then the solar charge controller. We're only getting a couple amps probably. Moving over here, we have two taps in the sink. Both of them are operated by foot pumps, which are down here. When I push on these foot pumps, if they operate appropriately, water comes out. So that's fresh water. We try not to use too much of that. And then the other one's salt water, which I actually have disconnected at the moment. We can just go outside and scoop it up if we need it. It's a lot easier right now. And back here is my favorite thing on the whole boat, probably, is the fridge. People are often surprised to find that I have a fridge, and it does a very good job. It's really well insulated. I'm very happy to have this. It means we can store vegetables, which is usually really hard to do in the tropics without a fridge. And I can also have a cold beer. Coming up, we have the nav station. It's not really a nav station on my boat, it's just... We got my radio with an AIS receiver on here. We can turn that on if we wanted to. That would give me my AIS display, and it's, I guess it alarms this way too when I'm sailing, so that's nice. Um, here's my chart plotter, which is just uh, an Android tablet. Um, back here, got more storage, more food. Okay, moving on. The living room of the boat, if you want to call it that. There's not much to it. Um, if I'm alone on the boat or if we're sailing, we sleep in these bunks here. Uh, a cloth, a leaf cloth comes up here and goes through the railings. And that keeps us from falling out of the bunk. You'll note that there's not a lot of ceiling on this boat. So yeah, I'm a, a little bit too tall for the boat. But I knew that getting into it, so don't feel bad for me. And I have two battery banks, and I'll show you the other one in a minute. Uh, one of the battery banks is in here, so I got two 12 volt batteries down here. And then under here, down there, we got the bilge. Okay, moving on. So these cushions come out, and they reveal these panels that come right off. In this particular locker, we store mostly camera gear and electronics. And you'll notice that everything's in dry bags or waterproof bags or Ziplocs because it seems like this would be a dry part of the boat. But the reality is, is there's no such thing as a dry part of a boat. And we've learned that the hard way, unfortunately. Over here we have the other storage area. And we did actually damage all of our books here because this area got wet when we sailed last week. So 
So, if you see things in plastic bags or dry bags, it's because there's no dry spot on the boat. Below the cushions, we also have storage. Um, this can be accessed a number of ways. We can lift up the cushions and get access to it like that. Here's another panel. I'll lift it out. And then we have canned food down on this side. Which we're not eating too much of right now because we can get fresh food on this island. It's a similar story over here. We have more of these storage areas. This one we have our sewing, sewing gear and some, some other stuff. People are often surprised when I have a sewing machine on board. Such a small boat, you have a sewing machine? Yeah. We use it a lot too. And again, all of our medical equipment, which our autopilots are buried down there. So I have two autopilots because I have backups for almost everything on the boat. Got an inverter over there in the corner, which we use sometimes. All right, that's the living room. Now let's move to the, the bathroom. Here we go. Okay, now we're in the bathroom. You'll notice that there's no door to our bathroom. Um, but we've made this little improvised door, so if we need to use a toilet, or if we have guests on board and they want some privacy, then uh, we can just close this. And now at least you have some privacy, but I mean like, <laughs> it's just a sheet. So you kind of got to get used to, to hearing things you may not want to hear. That brings us to everyone's favorite part of the boat. It's the very basic head, common in a lot of boats. Um, it's got a manual pump here. On the opposite side of the bathroom, while you're sitting doing your business, you can sort through the clothes over there. Um, and that brings us to the V-berth. Pretty roomy, like it's more than six feet, feet long because I can lay here no problem. Your feet kind of touch at the bottom like any V-berth on a boat. So whoever you're sleeping next to, you're gonna have to get comfortable with them. So we have a table on the boat, but um, it stores over here because if we have it out, it's almost always in the way. And it's uh, just the reality of a small boat is you can't have everything, but I'm glad it stores away nicely. So, you know, it's not in the way when it's not being used and that's nice. Uh, under here, I'm not gonna take the sheet off because it'll be too much work, but there's a big storage space. And under my feet, there's a 20 gallon water tank that's standard on this model of boat. Up there is our anchor locker. The other nice thing about sleeping in the V-berth is the hatches right above you. Okay. So I'm definitely not gonna pull everything out up here, but you'll have to take my word for it. We have a lot of storage back there and back behind there. And then underneath this whole area, that this whole panel comes out actually if you didn't want to use the space like we're using it. And that gives you kind of easier access to this area here. But we're just using this as storage. So we have uh, an extra sail down here, an extra Genoa, some tools. Uh, we have a kite for kiteboarding. I got my tools, camera bag. Um, so it has a Beta Marine 14 horsepower engine. So access to the engine has two latches on either side. It comes out just like that. This panel comes up and now the engine in all its glory can be seen. Right now I'm just trying to clean off all the rust. The front side's actually okay. There's a couple spots I need to be painted. But the back side is a different story. One of the seacocks on the boat, one of the five seacocks is right here. If this one hose clamp here fails, then the boat sinks. <laughs> so yeah, that's the engine. Now we're gonna go outside and take a look. On this side, I'm not gonna open this one because it's in mess. We have the fuel tank and we have a 20 gallon water tank below that. Tools, all that kind of stuff. On this side, on this side we have our life raft. Uh, this is the only place I could really find the store on the boat where we could access it in an emergency. Uh, we store our fins and stuff back there. And then if you look inside here, two more batteries and that's our main house bank actually. So. The trap. This has got to go um, and we'll open this aft locker, which is absolutely cool at the moment. But we have we have gas back here. We have rope bags. We have dive gear. We have sails back there and spinnaker. More rope. Two more anchors. So this is our main like storage space for 
for boat related items. On the back of the boat, the transom, we have what steers the boat most of the time, and that is our wind vane. This is a Navic wind vane. It's pretty, it used to be pretty common on small boats, though I have a pretty positive impression of it. Like any wind vane, it can be a little bit difficult to learn to properly tune. Of course, we have a swim ladder back here we can deploy. This. And that's our America right there. So, in terms of power generation, we have 250 watts of solar power. We have 150 watt panel on our spray hood, our Dodger. And we have another 50 watt panel. So, 50 watts. 50 watts of solar there. And then we have 150 watts of solar. So there's something I forgot to show you guys on the boat to show you now. Um, really important thing actually, and I can't believe I didn't show you earlier, but uh, here we go. Important. This is one of the most important pieces of equipment on the boat. Um, <laughs> equipment? <laughs> it's the third autopilot, you know, I got the two, two autopilots in there and then I got one over there. You gotta have a, a third backup autopilot. And look, now there's actually fruit and vegetables in our fruit and vegetable basket as opposed to earlier because my autopilot went shopping. Autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that and uh, yeah, I'll see you around.